Good afternoon and welcome to uh, today's class. We are gradually making progress in our oral English aspect of the jam question. And I'm particularly happy that we've touched different aspects of the uh, jam English, all right? As I always say, I believe that last week after our class, you were able to go home and do carry out some exercises on your own to understand better what we discussed. As I always tell you, you cannot escape this aspect of the question in this forthcoming exam. And don't tell yourself that, oh, the exam is still far away. No. This, the exam is just close by. So do everything you have to do, do everything necessary, do everything within your power to ensure that you score the highest of score you can get in this exam. We've already set the benchmark to 300, 360. That should be your target. On the four subjects you're going to write, that should be your target. And for English, all of these tips we are bringing Anytime we come to class, I need you to put them to use. As I said in previous classes, you're not going to escape oral English. I know it's difficult. I understand the difficulty involved. But with the tips, right, we are giving in class, if you can maximize th these tips, you will do better. You will do well. You will perform well. Just put them to practice. Practice them. Get your dictionary get some of the books I recommended, and then read through them, read them over and again, practice, past questions. Of course, the tutorial center here gives you um, past questions, right? So get them, study them, and arm yourself with the required knowledge. And I trust God you'll do well. Last week, we talked about stress in English, right? And we talked about, we discussed what stress is. We said that stress is the emphasis or the force applied in the pronunciation of a particular sound, a particular syllable in a word, in a word, in a written word, okay? The force you attach in pronouncing a word or a sound rather in a word, that is stress the prominence of that sound in that word, the prominence of that syllable in that word is referred to as stress. And I give you notes. I ask you to note the words that are, the sounds that are stress in English. We said that all nouns, all right? All vowels are stressed, not consonants, okay? And then, we went on to mention the, the rules guiding stress. When should you apply stress on the word? When should you apply stress a particular sound, a particular syllable? When should you do that? All of that we took care of last week. That, that was that on stress. Stress, we talk about syllable. Today we'll be talking about emphatic stress. Emphatic stress. Emphatic stress has to do with a word. You stress a word. Whereas stress normally involves syllable. And I told you that a syllable is the smallest unit of sound in any word in, in English. The smallest unit of sound in any word in English or any other language in particular. We call that syllable, okay? So why stress has to do with syllable? Emphatic stress has to do with word. Word. What does emphatic mean? It simply means emphasis. You emphasize something. All right? You place emphasis on something. All right? When you emphasize something, that thing you're emphasizing is going to be heard more. It's also going to gain prominence visibility, audibility, 
all right, audible. It will be it will be conspicuous. Anything you are emphasizing would be conspicuous. Okay, so from the word emphasis, we generated emphatic. So emphatic stress is one of those questions you will answer in the forthcoming examination. What do we use stress for? Emphatic stress. Emphatic stress is used to compare. We use emphatic stress to compare, right? You see somebody that is a little fat and someone that is as thin as I am, okay? And another person that is not as fat as, you have three persons, A, B, C. A is fat and then B is fat as well, but not as fat as A. And then C is thin, thinner than B. All right, why B is thinner than A? A is the fattest. So the emphasis is on A. When I'm describing the three students, I'm going to be referring to them either by name, with the way the adjectives I'm going to use to describe A. All right, let's say A, the first person is um, Angela, and the second person is Blessing, and the third person is Catherine, all right? So if I'm describing Angela, because Angela is fatter than every other person, there are some words I'm going to use to make Angela to, to look imposing, all right? Angela will be so imposing. So we use emphatic stress to compare. We use emphatic stress to connect. We use emphatic stress to clarify things in a sentence, okay? Now, in responding to questions on emphatic stress, interrogative sentences which are contradictory will be provided as options. And it's usually the answer, okay? In, in answering questions, this exam you're going to write, you're going to be answering questions on emphatic stress. In doing that, what do you need to take note of? Just know that interrogative sentences, which are contradictory, okay? When we say interrogative sentences, we mean sentences that ask question, interrogate. Questions such as who, what, why, those are interrogative words that are used to ask questions. Who, why, where, when, where, okay? All of those words are used for, to indicate interrogation. Who did you give the pen to? All right, why did you come late? When did you arrive home? Okay, where were the children when it happened? So interrogation, interrogate, ask question. Okay, now for you to pick the right option in every interrogate, uh, in every emphatic stress question in JAM English. What do you need to note? What are you going to note? The trick is this, or should I call it a trick? The trick is identify the stressed word in the question given. Identify the stressed word in the question given. For you to choose the right option, for you to pick the correct answer. One, in the question, identify the stressed word in the question given. We are going to give examples later. Number two, identify the option or options that do not carry that identified stressed word. Identify the option that do not carry that identified stressed word. Which option does not carry that identified stressed word? The option that does not carry it is going to be your answer. All right, is flipped, it's the other way around. That option that does not carry the identified stressed 
word is your answer to the question. There are no two ways about it. I repeat what I said. For you to get the answer correct, for a stressed, emphatic stress in any question, number one, identify the stressed word in the question you've been given. Number two, identify the option that do not carry that identified stressed word. Which option does not carry it? You have A, B, C, D. One carries the, the stressed word. One option will not carry it. Identify that one, okay? The stressed word may be capitalized. The stressed word may be capitalized. The stressed word may be bolded in your question. The stressed word may be bolded and capitalized, meaning it is bolded and also capitalized at the same time. The stressed word may be italicized, okay? But in the examples we are going to give on the board and also the, the examples you're going to find in the slides you're going to get at the end of this class, the stressed words are capitalized. In the exam you're going to write, in the jump question, the stressed word is going to be capitalized. So look out for that. So I need you to over and over again, tell yourself this. Tell yourself this. Number one, tell yourself that I have to identify the stress word in this question I've been given. Number two, tell yourself that I have to identify the option that do not carry that identified stressed word. The word you identified in number one. Number three, tell yourself that you have to note that the stressed word may be capitalized, it could be bolded, it could be bolded and capitalized, or it could just be italicized, okay? By italicized, it's written in a slanted form, all right? Now look at this example. Paul borrowed the novel. Paul borrowed the novel. Then you begin to ask yourself, what does it mean? Paul borrowed the novel. What does that mean, all right? You see that Paul here is emphasized. It's written in capital letter. So by saying Paul borrowed the novel, we are saying that it is Paul and no one else. It is Paul, not Peter. It is Paul, not Michael. It is Paul, not uh, Kingsley. It is Paul, not uh, John. It is Paul, not uh, James. It is Paul, not Kunle. That borrowed the novel. That's why Paul is written in capital letter for emphasis sake, for sake of emphasis, for sake of stressing, so that the police don't, don't go looking for anyone else, or the owner of the book don't go looking for anyone, just go after Paul. Whoever the Paul is, is Paul. The emphasis is on Paul. Now look at this. Paul borrowed the novel. Can you see borrowed is emphasized. We are saying that Paul borrowed the novel. Paul did not steal the novel. He borrowed it. Okay? He borrowed it. That is the meaning of this. Look at this. Paul borrowed the novel. See, is the word T-H-E that is emphasized. So what is that telling us? Paul borrowed a particular novel. All right? That we know, we know of. Paul borrowed a particular novel that we know of the novel, okay? We know this novel. All of us as students, we know the novel that Paul borrowed, all right? Now look at the last one. Paul borrowed the novel. Novel is emphasized, all right? Novel is emphasized here. You can see novel is written in capital letter. Paul borrowed the novel, meaning that Paul did not borrow a magazine. Paul did not borrow a journal. Paul did not borrow a newspaper. Paul did not borrow um, a tabloid. Paul did not borrow anything else. Pet, novel. That's what Paul borrowed. So you can see 
emphasis, emphasis, emphasis attached on particular words in sentences. All right. So now let's look at more examples that is going to reflect this point we have noted. The example is going to reflect this. We say we should, for us to get the correct answer, anytime we are faced with emphatic stress, questions in emphatic stress in any exam, in jam English, let's look out for this. Identify the stressed words in the given question. Number two, identify the option that do not carry that identified stress. Because it's that option that do not carry the identified stress that is your answer. Look at what, what we said there. In responding to questions on emphatic stress, interrogative sentences, which are contradictory, will be provided as option. It's going to contradict it. And it's usually the answer to the question. That one that is contradictory is usually the answer to the question you are treating. All right. So look at this example. Yes, there are a lot of examples here. So just a moment, let me wipe off the board and then we write, we, we take a look at these examples. For, for example, look at this question. This question says, Kunle's watch is made of gold, right? This question says, Kunle, Kunle's watch is made of gold, all right? So you can see what we're talking about is emphasized. Gold is the word that is emphasized because it's written in capital letter, all right? So now, Look at the options. Option A says, is Kunle's watch made of silver? All right. B, whose watch is made of gold? Watch this made of good. See what is made of good. What is made of good and D is necklace made of wood. Mm. So look at this. Can you see it now? Kunle's watch is made of good. No, number one, say we should identify the stressed word. Okay? So after identifying the stressed word, this is a stressed word. G-O-L-D, good, all in capital letter. So after we've identified the stressed word, what next are we going to do? Identify the option that do not carry that identified word stressed, identify it. So which option does not carry the identified word stress in this question? This is it, gold. Which option here does not carry the identified word stress? Is option A, A does not carry it. B carries it, gold is here, gold is here and gold is here. You see now? So. The answer will be, is Kunle's watch made of silver? That's a question. Is Kunle, that's an interrogative question. Remember, we said there's going to be an 
interrogative question, which, which is always contradictory to the former question, to the original question, right? So Kunle's watch is made of gold. Gold is emphasized. Is Kunle's watch made of silver? No, it's not made of silver, it's made of gold. So this interrogative question answers this, all right? Kunle's watch is made of gold. Is Kunle's watch made of silver? Okay, because gold is here, gold is here, and gold is here, and gold is here as the identified word stress, all right? Now look at, let's take another example. Once you know one, once you're able to understand one of the examples, you will be able to do the rest. Yeah. Once you're able to know what, what, what you have to know, what you have to know are the rules I've given to you. What are the rules for identifying or assigning emphatic stress? What do you do to know the answer to an emphatic stress, to a word that is stressed emphatically, emphatically stressed in English? What are the rules? Number one, identify the stressed word in a sentence. You see the one repeating this again and again. Number two, I said, identify the, tell me, identify the option that carry that identified stress, stress word. Which options? What are the options that carry them? All right? And we say that the stressed word will be capitalized, okay? be bold, bolded, can also be bolded and italicized, all right? And don't forget that we said that the option, the interrogative sentence will be provided as option and the interrogative sentence that contradicts the emphasized word is the correct answer. Hmm? The interrogative word, the interrogative question that contradicts the answer, uh, contradicts the question, is often the answer to the question. Now, take a look at another example. Here's another example. Last week, last week's football, football was very exciting. Very exciting, okay? So you can see, last week's football was very exciting, is the answer to the question. Then what is going to be the question? Last week's football was very exciting, is the answer to a question. What is going to be the question? You're going to get the answer to this, to this, all right, you're going to get the question to this answer by taking note of the word here that is stressed. The word stressed here is exciting because it's written in capital letters. If I was typing, I could italicize it, All right? If I was typing in my computer, I could as well bolded this, All right? But now it's written in capital letter. Which question? What are the questions or which of the questions we elicit this answer? Look at the options. A, was 
last week's tennis match very exciting was last week's tennis match very exciting was last week tennis was yesterday's football football match Football, very dull, and D. Was last week football training very for training very exciting. All right. And look at another example. Lambusa. Lambusa to. Lambusa to cough. The week, right? Lambusa took off the week. Here are the options. Did Lambusa take off the week? Did Lambusa take off the week? D, the Lambusa take off the ring. The Lambusa take off the ring. C, who took off the week? Who Took off the wig. What did Lambusa do? What did Lambusa do? All right. So look at these examples on the board. Last week's football was very exciting. Hmm? The stressed words, 
according to the rules, according to the notation or the, the information you should be aware of, says number one, identify the stressed word in the given question. This is a given question. Last week's football was very exciting. This is a, um, emphasized, stressed word. The emphasis, the stress is on exciting. All right? So when you've identified this, what's the next thing you have to do? Number two, identify the option or options that does not carry this identified stressed word. Identify the options that don't carry it. We, what, what, where are the options that don't carry this? The option or options that does not carry that emphasized stressed word. That's what you have to do. And according to the rule, that option that does not carry the identified, stressed, emphasized word is the answer you have to pick. And that option that does not carry the identified, emphasized, stressed word is always an interrogative question. That interrogative question is always contradictory to the previous question. It's always contradictory to the original question. Those are the things, these, these are the tips you have to arm yourself with. You have to note, work with, run with, practice. I'm going to repeat this note again. Because if you know this, you've, you've known, if you know this, I mean, to answer questions that dealing with emphatic stress in English, number one, identify the stressed word in the given question. The stress word is written in, is often written in capital letters. The stress word is often capitalized. The stress word can be bolded. The stress word can be bolded and capitalized. The stress word can be italicized. When you type, you italicize it. It looks slanted and tiny. That is how you know the stress word. Number two, after you have identified the stressed word, in the given question, identify the options that does not carry that stressed word. Which options, A, B, C, D, which of them does not carry that identified, emphasized, stressed word? Pick that one. That's going to be the answer. And that option that does not carry the identified, stressed word is always an interrogative question which is going to bring about the answer you will give because the original question the given question is always an answer okay it's always an answer now look at this last week's football was very exciting emphasized word exciting was last week's tennis Tennis match, very exciting. Exciting is here. Was yesterday's football match very exciting? Exciting is here. 
Was last week's football very dull? Exciting is not here. Was last week's football training very exciting? Exciting is also here. So what is going to be your answer? This was last week's football very dull. You will now answer by saying last week's football was very exciting. So dull is contradicting this exciting. So that is the reason this one will be the answer. All right. Now you look at this. Lambusa took off the wig. Took off. This a phrasal verb. Okay. So it's not only one word that could be emphasized. You can see a phrasal verb here. Here. All right. A, a, a verb and a preposition. Phrasal verb. Lambusa took off the wig. Did Lambusa take off a wig? Wig. Take off is there. Did Lambusa take off a ring? Who took off the wig? What did Lambusa do? What's going to be your answer to this question? What's going to be your answer to this question? Look at the emphasized word. Take off is here. Take off is here. Two cough is here. But this one does not carry two cough. So you see, what did Lambusa do? It will not give you this answer. Lambusa took off a wig. Can you see it? So practice this over and again. There are a lot of um, examples in the slides you're going to get after this class. Okay? So don't forget what I said. Stress is to a syllable. Why emphatic stress in particular is to a word. You can see a word, emphasis. All right? So we emphasize the word. We give emphasis. We give life. We give validity. We make that word imposing and conspicuous in the sentence. The negative, the opposite, the contradictory option to the original word is often your answer. So take note of the rules guiding assigning emphatic stress to a word. And when you do, and more practice, of course, let Jam give you 20 of emphatic stress questions. We get the answers correct. Hmm? Let Jam give you anything that has to do with stress syllable. You will get the answers correct. Is that clear? So till I come your way again, Make sure you don't relent in studying and practicing. Thank you.